A corpse twitches on the floor. Bones snap. Flesh warps. In seconds, it becomes a grotesque creature, and it wants nothing more than to kill you. Your weapon is almost out of ammo. Your suit is warning you. Oxygen levels dropping. Your mind starting to hear voices that shouldn't exist. But what if this wasn't just a game? Today, we're diving into Dead Space, not just as a survival horror classic, but as a science fiction scenario that might be closer to reality than you'd expect. Could something like necromorph infection actually happen? Could the markers really mess with your brain? And could Isaac's plasma cutter actually work in real life? Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and let's find out if you could survive in the universe of Dead Space. Imagine a corpse, reanimated, but not like your typical zombie. This thing twists into a grotesque killing machine, with claws where fingers used to be, and exposed bones sharpened like blades. That's a necromorph. In Dead Space, these horrific transformations are triggered by the markers, strange alien obelisks that emit electromagnetic signals. But these signals don't just reanimate the dead, they trigger violent, uncontrollable mutations in dead organic matter, turning human remains into biomechanical nightmares. Unlike real-world infections like rabies or the infamous cordyceps fungus, which infect living organisms, necromorphs only take over after you're already dead. That's the key. They don't infect you while you're alive. They wait. Then they convert your corpse into a weapon. And it's anything but pretty. Tissue tears, muscles reorganize, bones snap, twist, and fuse into lethal new configurations. The exact result depends on the original body and its surroundings, meaning every necromorph is unique. In the real world, we've got much more modest examples. Cordyceps fungi take control of ants, hijacking their brains before killing them and erupting from their bodies to spread spores. Rabies makes mammals hyper-aggressive to boost transmission. But what Dead Space imagines goes far beyond that, a pathogen that reanimates and weaponizes corpses in seconds. Biologically, this kind of transformation shares traits with cancer, unchecked cell growth, complete disregard for biological limits, but even the fastest growing cancers take weeks to visibly deform tissue. In Dead Space, it happens in mere seconds. Some scenes even suggest the transformation produces so much heat that the victim's blood boils and bursts through their skin. There's nothing on Earth that behaves like this. And what about those electromagnetic symbols from the markers? Could they really cause something like this? Well, we do know electromagnetic fields can affect cells, particularly gene expression. But we're talking subtle changes here. Sleep disruption, headaches, maybe some hormonal shifts not full-body reanimation and mutation. The idea of combining a synthetic signal with an alien pathogen is pure sci-fi creativity, but that's what makes it terrifying. The infection only spreads after death. It spreads fast via creatures like infectors and swarmers. Every corpse is a potential threat. It's not just a pandemic, it's a weaponized zombie outbreak on alien steroids. And just when you think it couldn't get worse, the markers have another effect, one that doesn't need you to be dead at all. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. You're alone, walking the echoing halls of the USG the Ishimura, fuck? and then you hear a voice. Is it someone from your crew? A radio transmission? No, it's your wife, dead for years and she's talking to you. This is a haunting. It's the marker hijacking your mind. The markers don't just trigger physical mutation. They emit what scientists in the Dead Space universe call the signal of madness, an electromagnetic field that scrambles the human brain, causing intense hallucinations, visual, auditory, and emotional. What's horrifying is how real that feels. Hallucinations, paranoia, compulsive behavior, these are classic symptoms of schizophrenia and psychotic breaks. In Dead Space, the marker doesn't just simulate these symptoms. 
it amplifies them until entire crews are driven to madness, suicide, or mass murder. This mirrors real-world psychological phenomena, like group hysteria, where fear and belief spread irrational behavior across entire communities. Except here, the influence is being broadcast, like a signal, and everyone exposed is vulnerable. There are scientific studies suggesting electromagnetic fields can affect brain activity, especially near the limbic system, the emotional core of the brain. Theoretically, interference in this region could trigger fear, aggression, confusion, but the effects observed in real experiments are subtle, mild discomfort or mood shifts. What the marker does in dead space is pure psychological annihilation. The scariest part? You begin to lose your grip on what's real. You can't trust your eyes, your ears, even your own memories. In a place where one wrong move can get you killed, that level of mental distortion is deadly. Surviving this nightmare requires more than weapons. It requires clarity, the ability to hold on to your sanity when the world around you is tearing itself apart. And for that, you need the right gear. Isaac Clark isn't a Marine, he's an engineer, and that's what makes him dangerous. He doesn't survive because he's heavily armed. He survives because he knows how to use what he has. The rig suit is more than armor. It's a life interface. That glowing spine, it's a health monitor, one of the smartest diegetic UI elements in gaming, and also a concept rooted in real science. We already have wearable tech that tracks heart rate, oxygen levels, and stress. But integrating all of that directly into a fully sealed, space-ready suit with a live HUD visible to teammates, that's still sci-fi. For now. Then there's the gear. The plasma cutter? Originally designed to cut through rock, not monsters. But its real strength is precision. Its rotating head lets Isaac switch between vertical and horizontal shots, perfect for severing limbs. In real life, plasma cutters do exist. They're used in heavy industry to slice through thick metal using high energy plasma arcs. But they're big. They need inert gas tanks, serious power, and careful handling. A handheld, battery powered plasma cutter like Isaac's? We're not there yet. Still, the concept is genius. Isaac turns industrial tools into weapons of survival. It reflects the essence of real world engineering adapt, overcome, survive. The modular upgrades? We see similar tech in modern drones, robotics, and custom-built machines. But everything has a cost. In dead space, resources are limited. Every plasma charge, every stasis pack, every energy cell is critical. This isn't just a gameplay mechanic. It mirrors the brutal efficiency required for space survival. Waste anything, and you're done. So, is Isaac's equipment realistic? Partially. It's grounded in science, but stretched for gameplay and drama. When the monsters start evolving, your gear alone won't save you. What will? Your strategy. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Forget everything you know about traditional combat. Headshots? Useless. With necromorphs, there's only one rule. Dismember to survive. These things don't have working nervous systems. They don't bleed. They don't stop when you shoot them in the head. The only way to take one down is to cut off its limbs, one by one. And that demands control, precision, nerves of steel. One missed shot wastes precious ammo. One moment of hesitation, you're dead. But that's just the start. Necromorphs operate like a hive mind. Through the markers in massive nexus organisms, they coordinate. They set traps, they play dead, they hunt in packs. It's like going up against a swarm of killer ants. If each ant had the mind of a predator, your only real advantage, environmental awareness. The Ishimura is packed with hazards, explosive canisters, tight corridors, faulty doors. Using the environment to your advantage can mean the difference between escape and a brutal death. And then there are the variants. The hunter, for instance, regenerates limbs in seconds. You can't kill it. At least, not with weapons alone. You have to stall it, trap it, or run. 
In this case, surviving doesn't mean winning. It means outthinking. These strategies echo real-world crisis management, conserve energy, use your surroundings, stay calm. In dead space, the enemy adapts, learns, evolves, and you have to do the same. Surviving a necromorph outbreak aboard the Ishimura takes more than firepower. It's a full-spectrum test of your sanity, your strategy, and your ability to improvise under pressure. Every bullet matters, every choice counts, and the line between rational thought and total madness is razor thin. Real-world science might offer glimpses into the biology or psychology behind what we see in dead space, but in the end, nothing can truly prepare you for its sheer brutality. The only thing that might save you is your will to survive. So let me ask you, if you were in Isaac Clarke's boots, could you hold on to your humanity or would you fall into the chaos? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into horror, science, and sci-fi, give us a like and subscribe to the channel because this was only the beginning of a much darker journey.